I don't know about you, but I listen to a lot of audiobooks, whether it's on my commute or doing chores around the house. I just, I love audiobooks. I do listen to quite a number of them. And I thought, hey, I haven't seen a lot of this. Let's compare the different audiobook apps because I've had a lot of experience with a number of them. And so let's just jump right into it. All right, number one is Audible. Audible is one of those that it's the standard, obviously, right? It's the main one. It's the one that I got my free audiobooks on for a number of years before I finally just bit the bullet and I pay my monthly or yearly subscription, whatever I'm feeling like for that time. I have a lot of experience with Audible, definitely the most out of anything, but we'll get there. So Audible is uh, a lot of good things. So the good things first the biggest selection you got it it's the hugest selection of anyone i mean and that's part of what they do is they go oh this, these audiobooks are only for audible so that's a little frustrating but it is what it is they also have a lot of deals a ton of deals so i mean and even to the point of do you really need to uh, pay the monthly subscription to get it you probably could just kind of wait around for the deals they just had one with it was up to 80% off on pretty much everything in the whole site. So that'll last you if you budget it out. You could really get a number of months worth of audiobooks just right there in one fell swoop. So anyway, it really does. They have a lot of deals, tons of deals. That's why it's not always perfect uh, for the authors themselves. But it, So I, I can't speak to that. That would be something better to speak on. But I can speak to how good of an app it is. So I do like that it gives you a lot of options as far as like speed. You can pick your speed from a list and there's lots of different speeds. Uh, we'll get into this with a lot of them that they don't they either have just a limited number, uh, uh, that's usually the case, or, or they do have a, a lot of options to pick through. But anyway, this is one where you can literally, you click on the speed or tap on the speed and you can, or the number, and then you can literally go find the, the one spot that you need that's perfect for you. I like a good 1.5, I'm right in there, just depending on the narrator, of course. Uh, the default of 30 seconds is can be good or bad. I think I prefer a 15 second, which a lot of these have, but 30 seconds is good. I do a lot of, I'm just, I if I miss one word or anything, I'm rewinding and then I'm, back a whole 30 seconds so you can tell how uh, frustrating it is to do anything with me and then I mean overall it works you're gonna get all the books you want now the bad parts of audible and I can tell a lot about these um, one is Amazon in general anything Amazon just has the most frustrating just way that they organize anything um, for somehow Apple just like just please copy them or something uh, Apple does organization so well and just intuitive and it makes sense whereas anything Amazon my fire stick is just annoying it's just the way that it just is like here's the stuff where Amazon Prime here's all the junk <laughs> and you're just like I, I, I need a little better organization than this and it, it they just kind of do that so that's that's the frustrating one um, it does crash semi easily my favorite way to enjoy my audiobooks is actually at night playing some mindless game uh, while i'm listening and so then i can just helps me focus on the listening part and uh and getting into my book while just playing this and so it will crash from time to time um, some of these apps as we move forward will do kind of and actually only very rare but we'll kind of if it gets interrupted it will actually start you about 10 seconds back. So just in case you missed anything, Audible does not do that. And I've had times and issues where it's been quite a bit back. It's probably my own fault from accidentally tapping on something. I just, I, one of the things that frustrates me with all apps is that they come up on your home screen and you can accidentally just fast forward yourself to who knows where. Um, so, uh, that's, anyway, that's probably something you can turn off or something. Tell me how that works, please. But anyway, uh, I would say overall, if I had to really rate this though, it's probably one of the better though. So it's, we're talking, especially with given the selection, given everything, 
we're talking probably an eight out of 10 here. All right, continuing forward, the other one that I do probably most often is the OverDrive app. It's the library app. So this is one that I usually look here first for an audiobook, and if it's not there, then I'll go use a credit. And so, um, and that's the beauty of OverDrive. Usually they'll connect to your local library. You just use your, your library card, and then whatever your library has as availability, then you can use. So this is, the OverDrive app really is, is one of my favorites. It is a good one that it, it, it works well for the books. And um, so now it does have some limitations, but we'll get there. So, but uh, it does, for the books that it has, obviously it's free. That's a huge, big thing. Uh, it supports the library. I really do, like it, it, it kind of tracks on what people are checking out from the library and everything. And so that does, uh, when they do their numbers and they get their funding and whatnot, as I understand it, I could be wrong, but as I understand it, that they do uh, get some good tracking on that. Um, now, like I said, the selection on the OverDrive app, it's rough. The, it, it's just, it's not even remotely close to, I mean, you could, there's plenty of books that just aren't audiobooks, right? That just haven't been made into audiobooks. So you're going to get even Audible, who has like the most vast selection that will be missing books. So, and I've had that. I've had that where I look first on Overdrive, then I look on Audible, just doesn't even exist. So that happens. But more often than not, by more often, I mean 99%, 0.999% of the time, if I can't find it on the Overdrive, it will be on Audible and usually is on the I only for Audible. So uh, Overdrive, though, it's a good app. It works and it downloads the, the, the book. Now, of course, again, it's one of those you do, you're dealing with the library. So you have to put it on hold. There's only a select limited amount that can even go out and, uh, and be borrowed. And then you can finally borrow it. And then you are kind of locked into your 21 days. And so therefore, what happens is that if you're in the middle of another audiobook and then your auto, your overdrive app book finally comes in and then you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm stopping that book and I'm going to start reading this one so I can make sure and read it within the 21 days, not to mention because I respect other people also waiting for this book. So um, it does have one of the good things is it has the 15 second rewind. I like that, that's just a good amount to just hit that. Obviously at any point in any of these apps, you can move the, the line anywhere uh, or the toggle toggle where you're at at any point. Um, and so, but the 15 second rewind is really the, the right amount because you can always press it more if you need more, if you need that 30 seconds, but I like that. Audible probably has an option to change that even, uh, but that's the default. Uh, what I do, I really like about the OverDrive app is that if something interrupts you, whether it's a call or your GPS or whatever it may be, it will actually then, once you get back into it, rewind an automatic 10 seconds. And so I really like that. It's not the end of the world if, if you don't need it, if it didn't do anything, it's only 10 seconds. But I like it personally, so I know I didn't miss anything because I am that <laughs> precise on my audiobook listening. All right, the OverDrive app, I, I really like it. I think it does a good job. It has a lot of just lack of actual stuff and just the process of using the library. But overall, it's good. I'm still going to give it a 7 out of 10 because for what it is, I don't think you can take points off for it being a library, right? Like, if anything, it's like, well, it's free, though. So <laughs> there you go. Another big, huge one is the Google Play one. I've had recent experience with Google Play. Now, Play, sound and everything is fine, and, and I haven't really mentioned that with everything else. The sound is fine on all these so far, but, uh, and Google Play has a healthy selection, so it's Google, it's gonna have some healthy selection there. Uh, but again, Audible kind of just like cornered that market on so many of those unique books, especially in the fantasy world where I spend a lot of my time, but I hope this can help anyone. <laughs> um, but Google Play, one of the things is, uh, it's a little weird and it's got some bugs in it and I've had, because this thing is just inevitable. I have these apps on my phone. I will be listening 
and something else interrupts it, right? It is literally the constant issue with any audiobook or music for that matter. What Google Play will do is, and it happened way too often for me to ever really become a repeat customer. So this is just obviously my personal own personal opinion here on the internet. Um, but what it would do is then often, like by often, I mean, again, way too many times, way more times than I wanted it to, but it was like five or six times where I'd be listening, something interrupted, call, whatever it may be, an ad from my stupid game I was playing. Um, and then it actually went back to like, apparently a previous like, like saved spot. And we're talking like minutes gone, if not longer, like 10, 15 minutes, like not just a couple minutes, but it would be a healthy amount of minutes where it's like, now I'm going, all right, I got to figure out where, where was that? Okay. Did I hear that? Okay. I think I did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I remember this part. And just, it just, that, it just throws me off. That's one of the things that uh, you get interrupted enough and then to like also have to go and figure something out where you're at, where you're lost. We're talking about throwing you out of the book and everything. I gotta say the Google Play is, we're talking probably my least favorite. I, I'm gonna give this one maybe a three out of 10. It's just, I did not like it. It was not, I was not a fan. And it's mostly based on, this is like my notes are pretty sparse on it, but it was like, Ah, I kept doing this and that was really frustrating. Another one uh, that obviously is one of the top big ones, the big ones is Apple Books. Apple Books is a good one. It's got, again, good sound quality. I haven't really, I'm not, I don't, I'm not judging audiobooks so much for the sound quality as long as it's, it's fine and, and it's not like music where you want this excellent, you wanna hear the basses and the trebles. If it's more about the the actor doing the work than actually the sound. Although sometimes from time to time, I found that there are audiobooks that are just recorded poorly, because <laughs> there's just not a lot of uh, care given to that. But anyway, Apple Books, uh, I think again does a good job. It has a, a healthy free section. Uh, again, I think even just these big companies are a little at the mercy of of Audible with their exclusive picks. So. I did, I have found, uh, so what they do have is they have the 15 second rewind. I like that, the 15 second, like auto quick rewind. Uh, it does keep its place when it's interrupted by phone call, by your stupid ad on the game, whatever it may be, uh, but it goes just right back. It doesn't do the nice 10 second thing like the overdrive one does, or the 10 seconds back. Uh, it does have the usual sleep options that these have where you can just set it for an amount of time and then it'll just go off. So you at least know, hey, <laughs> at least I can't have missed too much and, and I have a range by which I can go back to uh, if I fell asleep in the middle and it kept going. Now, one of the things is it does have limited speed options. Uh, it has limited speed options, unlike Audible, where you can pick from a whole list of, and it goes by, one, by 0.1 speed on each level. So that's a really good one, whereas Apple Books is, and you can only cycle through one at a time, and so you just kind of press it, and and you can go up or down, right? So it is, it's not ideal, it's not perfect, it's fine though. You're not, you're usually going that way anyway. Just oh, I need a little faster. Beep beep beep. You have to do it a couple times as opposed to, you know, tap for the draw for the drop menu or drop or the pull up menu, and then pick where you want it, right? All right, with the Apple Books app, it's solid. It just, it doesn't have some of the things that I really like about Audible and the uh, and the OverDrive app. So I'm gonna give it a good solid six out of 10. It's a healthy, it's on the it's on the plus side. They all have so many issues anyway, but it works. It functions, you gotta be happy with what you have, right? To some degree. Those are kind of the big ones. There's a couple of new ones that have kind of come out lately. So I wanted to talk about those. The Libro FM. Libro FM is a, a kind of a newer one, at least to me, and it seems to be kind of pushing to, to become the new like go-to audio, audio book app. Um, so listening to this has a 15 second rewind, auto rewind. So that I, I really like that one, or not auto rewind. I don't know why I keep calling that. 
It has a, the 15 second rewind button, so that's good, or fast forward button, I guess, if you wanted that. Uh, sometimes that comes in handy when you've been pulled back too many minutes. Uh, then uh, and it, it has the sleep function, and usually they're about the same. They give you about 15 minute increments up to about an hour. Uh, this one has that. Uh, it does restart you right where you left off when you do get interrupted. I, I tested this on multiple occasions. Um, because you just inevitably test it by listening to an audiobook, and then I mark it down. Um, it does have a good list of speeds to pick through, and uh, and so you know that it, it does the same kind of pull up menu, and you can go through and find your speed. So that's a good one, uh, and it has a healthy variety of stuff. Again, as far as things that are available and not only exclusive to Audible. Um, but I did like, it does, it just, it seems to be good. It seems to offer, I mean, really they all kind of offer these like free books. So you can get up to, you know, one to two books per source <laughs> as you go. So Libro FM, I'm going to go with this. It's a good solid option that doesn't have the, the benefits that I like on the overdrive or audible, but it's solid. So I'm going to give it a six out of 10. I think it's, it's a solid one audiobooks.com this is one of the probably the big one that that is kind of becoming a big competitor as well just like libro.fm and audiobooks.com is it's very similar i felt like to audible it had a lot of the same things a lot of the same um just interacting with it uh it does a lot of the promotion the same promotional things like have a free audiobook or two to just try us out and I've definitely taken advantage of that it it's it's good it has um, the biggest thing really is just the not as much selection I mean really when it comes down to it it's it's a healthy uh, good solid it's it is it's a 30 second that's so why I'm like it kind of mimics a lot of what audible has as a 30 second you know uh, re, uh, rewind button uh, it has the usual sleep stuff. It has the, the ability to do bookmarks and take notes even on certain parts, which is good for us reviewers, although I do it in my own just like notes app. Uh, when I have ideas and whatnot or things, things I need to write down, I'll be like, at this point, chapter whatever. Um, and uh, so overall, it's a good one. It just it's, just doesn't have that selection. Uh, they um, they have, what I, what I liked about it, there's this one, uh, spot you can actually kind of change slightly some preferences as to like what you see you can either see like just by chapter or by the whole book so you can cycle through those you can toggle through those it also gives you the good speed options by point ones though it does it in a little different way where you can actually you more scroll instead of just picking I like that less just because my hands are too <laughs> Like, I'm um, imprecise to say the least. Um, I will, uh, to quote, what is it? To quote The Simpsons, I'll fat finger it and mess it all up. So I actually prefer, which I can do with anything really. Um, but anyway, it doesn't have the like pick. It has just literally like a, a bar with a little, the, the dot in it where it's at. So you can either scroll it or you can use the plus or minus on it. Um, but again, those are just kind of minor things. There were some... It had some issues, I remember, with playing, with doing other things. And that just might have been an old phone. So I can, again, this is all my opinion and my experience with it. Could have been an, all, uh, an old phone, not enough phone, not enough RAM going on uh, to be able to support so much going on or going on at one time. But I never really had that problem with Audible. Audible feels like a much more streamlined, quicker app that works typically. Uh, pretty well all the time. So audiobooks, I'm going to go, uh, audiobooks.com, I'm going to go with a 5 out of 10 just because it, it had some of those issues. It's not perfect. Uh, I have had more probably interaction with that though than some of these others. So maybe that was the part of the problem why these others are getting a higher rating on my rating scale. All right, another one that just kind of recently I've learned about is called Chirp. And it, again, is trying to make its its name in the audiobook world. Uh, it's it, and I could be wrong about this. It might be just you know kind of starting out with more independent books. So that's kind of cool supporting those independent books there. Uh, but just again, it, the app itself 
it, it, it again is very pretty typical. I don't think it's that hard for these apps to just play audiobooks, um, especially when I don't think your listeners are caring so much about the actual, the real quality of, of what he, you're hearing in your ear. You're, call, you're caring about the story and how it's read. That's the, the big things that really is. The, it does have a 15 second rewind, so that's always, that's been in my positives, I like that. So you adjust your speed, and this was a, a unique one, by this plus or minus on it, and you can only go by one at a time. So you can't like, you know, it's not pulling up a whole thing and then you pick your one, you're, you're having to plus, 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 or minus, 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 to get to where you want. Not the end of the world, but it is a little, uh, it's not ideal. It's not the perfect way to do it. I don't, I don't love that of all these. It does go back to where you left off when an interruption happens. There isn't that auto rewind that I like in the Overdrive app, but it does at least go back to right where you were last going. And then with a 15 second rewind, pretty much does the same. What I liked about it is it does provide a percentage complete, like right there in the app. Like one of the, the things that I'm going back to Audible, because that's kind of the, the foundation there. But to be able to look at where I'm at in like the whole book, I'll often have to, you know, um, sleep the whole screen and then go back to just looking at the home screen and then I can see the, the amount where I'm at in the full book as opposed to just the chapter. Uh, although it does kind of, anyway, <laughs> when you adjust the speed, it gives you also some kind of estimated time left um, as well. I guess not estimated, it's probably the exact time left. Um, but Chirp, Chirp was good, it seemed good. Again, I'm, a lot of these are just kind of falling in the same bracket, six out of 10, I think that is what works for that. All right, um, another one I just recently found, and this might be, and these last two might just be in the more reviewer realm, and so you can, Turn off now if you're not a reviewer. A couple in these in these reviewer kind of realms is Authors Direct. Um, this one it's a little simpler, and I think they're kind of like, well, you're getting this book for free, so deal with it. Is what I kind of this is what I read into it. They have not said that again. All this is my opinion, um, but you they don't really have so they have a 15 second rewind. I like that or fast forward. But the thing is, if you reach the end of that track, that section, and you have to go to the last section, it doesn't let you 15 second rewind into that. And this is where I discovered that that is apparently an issue now. So that makes sense. So what happens is you'll, you know, you'll, you'll be having a track going and you rewind it, rewind it, rewind it, and then... Um, you know, you might go and you might just have barely missed something when the, the next chapter started or something and you, or you want to, oh, I just missed something when that last chapter just ended and you can't go to the 15 second. You have to go to the drop or the pull up menu, find the last chapter you were just on and then rewind, I guess this way, all the way back to where you were. It, that's just, it's, it's maddening. It's, <laughs> it's. It just is like, it happens too many times to like, for that not to be really just annoying to have to deal with. Uh, so anyway, Authors Direct, it's not ideal. It is definitely limited speed options. It's more of the, in the 0.25 increments. Uh, and um, obviously also limited selection and definitely more limited than usual. So that's one, I just, it just, get, it feels like a, we made an app because we had to make an app, but <laughs> uh, it is the bare bones, the barest of bones for an app. All right, Authors Direct, I am going with, I think I'm gonna go have to go with a three out of 10. It's, it's pretty bare bones. NetGalley is an interesting one. Um, this is another one where it's for the reviewers to be able to, to listen to these and, and be, or they're provided by the publishers usually or the author directly. And, um, and NetGalley is one that a lot of reviewers use. Um, and I only discovered recently that they have an audiobook section because that's how old school I am. I, I started with when they were giving out the Kindles, uh, Kindle books, not Kindles, <laughs> but uh, the ebooks, I guess, probably on anything. Um, but anyway, so one thing I liked is this is the first one that I saw this. It has two bars that it puts in there. So you got two bars, 
One has your where you're at with the chapter and the progress through the chapter. The other one is through the book. So I kind of like that. I hadn't seen that. There's plenty of space. Literally, most of these apps, half of your space is used up by just showing the cover of the book. And it's like, I know what book I'm reading. Good. We're good after, you know, the first second or so. Uh, so anyway, I like utilizing the space well. Um, this one again is one of those, there's probably more issues with it that I didn't like that, uh, anyway, that I just had issues with. Uh, the, so one small one is just the 30 seconds or 30 second rewind instead of the 15. I do prefer the 15, 30 second, not the end of the world. Uh, this was the one that I really didn't like. It will keep playing when you get interrupted. So you have an ad show up on a game that you're playing or a call or whatever. It will do that weird thing, and I don't know if you've ever done this, because I have, where the thing keeps playing while you're on the phone call, and then the person on the phone call is like, who's talking? Are you talking? What? And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> get this off. Get this off. And then, of course, you don't, and it screws everything up, and your life crumbles around you. But it was like, so in other words, there is no 10 second rewind when you get interrupted because there's no rewind whatsoever because it just keeps going. <laughs> that was just weird, just quieter. It like mutes it a little bit, but or it's muted a little bit more, but it's it still goes and you're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Um, there's very limited speed options for your speed. Just goes by 25.25, which I think it's fine, but it does always just depend on the narrator. And sometimes like I like, I usually typically like a 1.5 is my speed, but there's some that are reading so slowly that I like maybe like a 1.7 or 1.82. I've definitely found to be just a little too quick for me, but I've gotten to 1.8 on certain ones that, that does work out. NetGalley, I'm definitely going with more of a four out of 10. All right, so I hope that gave you somewhat of an idea of where audiobooks are. I love my audiobooks. I'm constantly listening to them. Um, like I said, doing chores, going to work and back. I love them. They are a big factor in my life. <laughs> so I've dealt with a lot of different apps. I hope this helps a little bit to kind of choose where you're going. I do kind of overall have to say, Audible's where it's at. There's a lot of deals, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do the subscription. I think you can honestly wait around and figure out for the deals that you're going to be fine because you get a, you know, it's, you bought the book and it's yours. Uh, you could probably work it out to just get deals, although they do have members only deals. And I'm not just, whew, I haven't said this, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in any way sponsored by any of these. I don't have any skin in this game. I just know what I've listened to and I've listened to a lot of them. Uh, it really seems to make the most sense. I do like supporting kind of these smaller ones that, and I think if you can find the books on them, it's not going to hurt too much. I just have, I have an iPhone, and so I have the collection of <laughs> audiobook apps in my on my iPhone that I just kind of go through and I can find the right one. Um, I guess kind of out of sight, out of mind, sometimes I do forget what other books I have in other apps. So that is the problem with doing that, but I do like kind of supporting these smaller ones uh, where I can, but it, it, when it comes down to it, it just seems like Audible just has, it's the selection really that you're going for and that you just can't beat it. So overall, that's probably the best one with the combination of using Audible and Overdrive. I highly recommend doing that. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts on it, if you disagree with anything, obviously let me know. This is Shelf Centered. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Obviously, if this is something you can dig, I appreciate it. Take care. Bye.